the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Baby, you need to come bring me something to eat, because I'm starving. What do you mean I can't eat out on the corner? I'm professional. You got me out here in stilettos and booty shorts, and I can't eat out here because it's unprofessional? Oh, no. What do we got? Prostitute. Looks like a homicide. Signs of sexual assault and strangulation. Bruise marks on her neck and a few pop blood vessels in her eyes. Any witnesses? A working girl. I thought I'd let you question her. Looks like someone beat me to it. She's still trying to make her quota. Hey, move along, pal. She's closed for business. You guys wouldn't know where the nearest cash machine is around here, would you? Mike Logan? Hey, I thought you retired. Yeah, well, I kind of heard the same thing about you. <laughs> Detective Benson, Olivia. Good to finally meet you, Detective. What brings you down here? I'm working a lead on the Massapequa Mangler case. His first victim, prostitute named Angelica Moore. She was killed in my jurisdiction about nine months ago. Been on it ever since. Well, we appreciate the help. We don't need it, but we appreciate it. You have anyone you like for the Mangler? A David Gondapur, a Robert Moffat, and an Ernest Limrose. All Johns have been busted down here. What's special about these guys? They got noticed. Really above average creepiness. Moffat liked to use handcuffs, and Gondapur got busted for assault on Angelica Moore, but I got nothing to tie either one of them to the murders. What do we know about the Mangler's M.O.? All I know is he sexually assaults them, and COD is always strangulation. If your Vic's one of his, that'll be lucky number eight. Plus, he's smart. Takes his girls from different boroughs, but so far, he's dumped all of them in and around Nassau County. Well, the M.O. matches. That much we know. She's got a lock of hair missing, poor girl. That could be our souvenir. Souvenir? Each of the Mangler's victims is missing a lock of hair. They kept that info from the press. That's interesting. You know something? Sex offender I busted years ago. Kept the same kind of souvenirs after each assault. And guess what? He's out on parole. Do we have any reason to think our Vic can be connected to the Mangler? CSU found some burlap fibers in the victim's hair. Same type of fibers showed up on two other victims of the Mangler. Someone cut her up pretty good, though they look like mostly defensive wounds. If this is the work of the Mangler, I wonder why the change in M.O. Not to mention the fact that we found her body on the same street where she worked, instead of in Nassau County somewhere. Botched job, maybe? She got out of the car and he panicked? So where is this guy now? Last I heard, he was in violation. His P.O. hadn't heard from him in nine months, maybe. That's about when the killing started, right? That's about when Angelica went missing. 
I'll sniff around, see what I can dig up. Benson, should we go chat with the girl who found the body? Hey, Curtis, I'm uh, real sorry about Deborah. Thanks. Girls doing good? My oldest is looking at colleges, wants to teach special education. Good. That's, that's good. The clock's ticking on our witness here. What say we question her while she's still feeling cooperative? What's your name? Jenny. That's your pimp who sent you a text message, isn't it? Give me his name and I can fix your problem. All us around here got the same daddy. If I give you his name, these other girls will turn me in to get on his good side. That's how he plays us. David Gondapur, Robert Moffat, Ernest Limrose. Those names mean anything to you? Not to me. We call them Johns for a reason. No real names. That's how it works. Did you know the girl you found? Mm-mm. I ain't seen her but once or twice. Don't even know her name. Come on, Jenny. You said all the girls out here have the same pimp. You know her name. Uh... Wendy. She was a new girl. Did you see the victim at all today? Before you found her like this? No. She kept to her side of the street. I kept to mine. Jenny, you said business was slow. As long as this guy is on the loose, no one is safe out here, including yourself. I maybe saw her get picked up. Did you get a look at her, John? It was a red van. That's all I saw. And that was the last time you saw her alive? <sighs> yeah. You notice anything about this van? A license plate, a broken window. Maybe it'd been in an accident. It was a funny kind of red. More like brick color. That it? Look like any old regular van to me, except for that. Who is Wendy working for? I don't know. I mind my own. Come on, Jenny. You're no rookie. You know all the players out there. I told you, I don't know who her daddy is. You know what, Jenny? We can always take you to Central Booking, let you sit in the bullpen for a few hours, and try and jog your memory. Arrest me? For what? Jenny, give us the name of Wendy's pimp, and we promise it'll never come back to you. <sighs> we call him Bankroll. He's out over on West 145th with all the other pimps. Check it out. From this corner, you can see all the vehicle traffic coming in and out of this area. No wonder Bankroll hangs out here. He can keep an eye on the Johns cruising his girls. There he is. Let's go get him. Morning, Bankroll. You talking to me? I didn't know we was acquainted. Detective Benson, Detective Curtis, homicide. Come on, man. I'm trying to read the paper and these people just got my latte right. Come on back later. Relax, Bankroll. We just have a few questions for you. Wendy Crane. She was your girl, wasn't she? Who, me? Hell nah. I don't know no girl named Wendy.
We did our homework, Bankroll. All right. Maybe, maybe she came to me for advice from time to time. That's all I'll say. You see everything from this coffee shop, don't you? Greatest show on earth, man. I ain't missed a night in 25 years. How about a red van? Seen Wendy get into one of those lately? Nah, nothing like that. Seen the sanitation workers van here last night. You know, New York's strongest. Maybe the cat you looking at worked for the city? Wendy was your girl. I'm betting you watched her like a hawk. We know a red van picked her up last night. Maybe not a red van. What kind then? I seen a white van down here a couple times. Figured it was just some bridge and tunnel CPA playing that plantation game. Got a sweet tooth for some brown sugar. But it stuck out for some reason. I remember later that I seen Angel. That's Angelica. She got picked up in that same kind of van the night she went missing. Figured if I saw it again, I'd take care of business. But he never came back. David Gondapur, Robert Moffat, Ernest Limrose. Any of those names sound familiar? Who you think I am, man? The public library? I ain't asking people for no ID. These guys would have stuck out. Not your typical John looking for a night away from Maud. They scared girls, even got physical with them. They were arrested. You'd know their names. Man, it's always them cats from the suburbs. There was this Arab looking dude down here once or twice. He had money, but I had to run him off. Arab-looking dude? Yeah, man, you know, like Lawrence of Arabia and all that. Lawrence of Arabia was English. I know who Lawrence of Arabia is, fool. Did he drive a red van? Nah, drove a Escalade, white leather seats, nice. Scared Angelica real good, so we had a little conversation. Then the police showed up. Then what happened? I watched it all go down. Cops roll up. Arab fool would have got off with a warning if he could have stopped making words with his mouth. A few weeks later, he comes around again. Gives me a thousand to have Angel keep a mouth shut. Ain't heard nothing about it since. Uh-huh. So he roughed up Angelica, and you took a bribe to keep it quiet. Nice. Don't go on any vacations, bankroll. We may need the pleasure of your company again. I'm not a big fan of racial profiling, but based on the physical description, sounds like we should talk to David Gondapur. Lieutenant, how can I help you? We have a potential suspect in the case, but he's... Let's just say we don't want to scare him off with our gritty urban vibe. You want to use the DA's office? Leather chairs and expensive books. We'll get a better interview if he thinks we're treating him like a witness instead of a suspect. No problem. I'll set it up. Mike. Abby. Good to uh, see you again. Likewise. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Gandapur. May I ask why I'm here, Miss Carmichael? We're following up on some leads in regards to the Massapequa Mangler case. The Massapequa Mangler. I'm afraid I'm not familiar. Do I need my solicitor? That's entirely within your rights, Mr. Gandapur. But you're not a suspect. We just want to ask you a few questions. Mr. Gandapur, we have an eyewitness who saw someone matching your description with Angelica Moore. My description? A man of Middle Eastern descent. About your height and build, similar vehicle. I am no more Middle Eastern than Manhattan is Midwest America. I am Pashtun. My people hail from Pakistan and Afghanistan, Southeast Asia. I apologize. Perhaps one of your male colleagues should finish conducting the interview for you. They may have a firmer grasp of geography. You live in Brookville, correct? Gold Coast of Long Island? 
not far from Massapequa. I also have an apartment on the Upper East Side and a home in Pelican Bay, Florida. Do you water ski, Miss Carmichael? I'm really not a boat person, thanks. Have you ever been to West 141st Street in Harlem? Harlem? Whatever would I go to Harlem for? Mr. Gondapur, you were arrested for assaulting a prostitute on West 141st Street less than a year ago. Surely you remember. I, yes, of course. I, I did not realize that was in Harlem. It, surely you must know then that the charges were dropped. The woman you were accused of assaulting, Angelica Moore, was murdered not long after your arrest. She is believed to be the Mangler's first victim. I am very sorry to hear, but um, my arrest was a misunderstanding. I was lost. I asked her for directions. She volunteered to show me how to find the George Washington Bridge for ten dollars, I believe. I naively let her into my car where she threatened to blackmail me with some story of being attacked. The poor girl, I, I wish I could have helped her somehow. You own a white 2011 Cadillac Escalade, correct? Yes, as do a great many other people on Wall Street. Zero percent financing comes in very handy around bonus time. How about a van? Those ever come in handy? Certainly not. I could hardly take investors golfing in something like that. That's why I have the Escalade. Again, we appreciate your time, Mr. Gandapur. Feel free to call my office should you wish another appointment. Good day. Ugh. Do you think he's our guy? I don't know. He was too slick, too prepared. Like he knew this would happen. Well then, the pressure's on. Keep an eye on him. See if he makes a mistake. Forensics? They didn't find much, but the burlap fibers they found on Arvik contain traces of something called atrazine. It's a pesticide. New York put it on the restricted list last year. Only licensed professionals can buy it. Pest control, farmers, landscapers. Detective Curtis. Benson, you remember the Mickey Trevino case? Yeah, that was Cormac's caller. The gun Trevino was using, he claimed to have found it hidden in the basement of his apartment building. Cormac was able to confirm. Here's a list of residents from 1998 onwards. Maybe you can do something with it. Got it. We'll meet you there. Logan tracked down that sex offender who violated his parole. His name is Patty Jackson. Get this, he's working a landscaping job in Sugar Hill, two blocks from where our Vic was found. Your case just got a whole lot more interesting. Keep me posted. Patty Jackson, you're under arrest. For what? For what? You're in violation, Patty. Nah, nah, me and my PO, we got it all worked out. My uh, probation transfer got messed up, that's all. Well, there's our rust color. The van's got red priming paint all over it. I'll keep an eye on him while you search the van. Know what you're looking for? The fibers found on the victim were burlap, and we know the mangler likes to use zip ties and duct tape to bind his victims. We found some crystal meth on Wendy. She had a lock of hair taken and she had been cut. I'm thinking the killer used a knife to scare her and then he used it to cut a lock of her hair when he was finished. There should be some blood in the van. I got some blood here. Where do the wise, Patty? You kill a girl in your van, you should worry about cleaning the inside, not painting the outside. That's mine. I, uh, I cut myself on a hedge trimmer.
burlap sacks of atrazine. Hope you got your certified applicator license for that, Patty. That's a heck of a fine otherwise. Duct tape. We'll see if the end piece matches up with any of the pieces found on Wendy. This is interesting. You wear a lot of jewelry, Patty? I made that. I sell them at flea markets and stuff. It's not a restricted item. Whoa! Looks like crystal meth. You trying to lose weight, Patty? That ain't mine! Zip ties. Could be used in his line of work. We'll see if they're the same type as the ones found on the Mangler's other victims. All right, Patty, I've seen enough. You're coming downtown. You don't need to do that. I'll report on Monday, I promise. Save it for the judge. Your parole officer says hi, says he hasn't seen you in over nine months. Your apartment was almost empty. You staying somewhere else? Hotel, maybe? I hate hotels. They remind me of the joint. So what happened, Patty? Did Wendy fight back? Is that why we found her in Harlem instead of some swamp in Nassau County? Tell me this, smart guy. Any chance you ran into Wendy in Harlem? In your brand new white van? I never saw that girl before, I swear. Never, huh? We have a witness that saw you pick up Wendy Crane the night she was killed, Patty. Okay, look, maybe she was in my van. I was in jail for a long time, you know? If I break the law, I'm in violation. That's why I lied. You say an Angelica Moore never got into your van. Can you think why a witness might have seen that happen? I don't know who you're talking about. We have a witness that saw Angelica Moore get into your van before you painted it. <sighs> We're not getting anywhere. Let's just book him for violating his parole and we'll charge him for the murders when forensics gets back to us. No, wait! Angelica wasn't my fault. It wasn't even my idea to pick her up. It was his! Honest! Patty, if you had an accomplice, now's the time to tell us. This guy, he had a thing for Angel, okay? 
He tried to pick her up once, and something happened. What was his name? I don't know, okay? It was just a one-time thing. He gave me a name and told me to bring it to his place so they could party, okay? Great. Why don't you show us where his place is? Uh, you know, actually it was, uh, <laughs> it was in my hotel room. One of those no-tell motels. I don't even remember which one. Enough, Patty. I know cops at Rikers who owe me a favor. They can make your visit there really uncomfortable. I'm telling the truth, I swear! You said this guy tried picking up Angelica before, but something happened. Any chance he was five foot six? Arab descent? I already said too much. You tell us who he was, right now, and we can work out a deal with the DA. You wait, and you go down alone. All alone. Let's try this again. Five foot six, Arab descent. You know him! The Arab guy. Who is he? Or are you so stupid you never even got his name? He ain't Arab. He's Pashtun. He don't like to be called Arab. I think I want a lawyer now. First smart thing you've said so far. I knew Gondapur was hiding something. We have no physical evidence tying Gandapur to any of the murders. Believe me, if Gandapur's involved somehow, I'd love to nail him. But we don't have nearly enough for a warrant. Find a connection between him and Jackson. Sorry, but that's the best I can do. Patty's parole officer was able to get us his employment file and several other records from the landscaping company where he worked. You think Gondapur was one of Jackson's customers? The landscaper he worked for had clients all over Long Island. It's possible. Patty Jackson placed a call from his work phone to David Gondapur on October 20th. The same day Gondapur paid $227, which Jackson collected. Looks like we found our paper trail. Mr. David Gondapur, we have a warrant to search this property for evidence relating to the murders of Wendy Crane and Angelica Moore. Very well, please, come inside. Shall I have some iced tea, mate? Actually, we'll start with the garden shed, if you don't mind. When's the last time you were in the shed, Mr. Gondapur? I... I suppose I am in and out quite often. I like to do some of my own gardening. It, uh, it relaxes me. Mr. Jackson and I have become fast friends as a result. He is quite talented. I'll keep an eye on Gondapur while you have a look. Found some blood on this cutting tool. Could be Wendy's. More burlap sacks of atrazine. The shed would make a perfect place to assault a victim. It's hidden, inaccessible, no way the nearest neighbor could hear anything. No surprise to find a shovel here. But if any of the dirt found on it matches the soil in which the Mangler victims were buried, that'd be powerful physical evidence to convince a jury. Oh. 
zip tie. Same brand, same color as we found in Patty's van. Forensics may even be able to tell if they're from the same store-bought pack. More duct tape. Same as the kind we found in Patty's van. Air freshener. Could be the same type used in Patty's van to hide the smell of decomp. Forensics will be able to tell me if it's a match. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Mr. Gondapur, where is your counsel? I choose to represent myself in this matter, Your Honor. Your Honor, Mr. Gandapur has ample resources with which to hire a whole team of lawyers experienced in defending clients charged with capital crimes. Actually, Your Honor, my alleged co-conspirator and I wish to be tried together. We will be co-counselors, Your Honor. Your Honor, we cannot have one defendant putting another on the stand. Mr. Gondapur, are you and Mr. Jackson willing to be held responsible for your knowledge of court procedures, your ability to adequately cross-examine, and communicate your side of the story efficiently and effectively? We are, Your Honor. Then I see no problem with you representing yourself pro se. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Uh, not guilty? Well done, Mr. Jackson. The rest of you will see you at trial. It doesn't take much imagination to see what's going to happen here. They'll each point the finger at each other and create enough reasonable doubt, and both of them will walk. And acting as their own defense will give them total access to each other. Plenty of time to get their story straight. Yeah, but Gandapur is a shark. He'll figure out how to put this all on Jackson somehow while he walks. Then get Jackson to roll on him first. Jackson's a sex offender on parole accused of murdering eight women. What can we offer him other than life in prison? A chance to tell his side of the story without Gandaper pulling the strings. Shoot for the moon. If that doesn't work, divide and conquer. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth without omission? I do. What makes you think Patty Jackson and David Gandapur are co-conspirators in the deaths of these women? Aside from the physical evidence, I believe Jackson worked for Gandapur. How so? I believe they form what's called a dominant-submissive pairing. You sometimes find with serial killers who work together. As partners, they were able to fulfill each other's appetites. Jackson for sexual violence, Gondapur for murder. Objection, Your Honor! I'll rephrase. Based on the physical evidence, how, in your professional opinion, did Mr. Gandapur and Mr. Jackson work together to commit these murders? Judging from the physical evidence found on the victims and in Mr. Jackson's work vehicle and in Mr. Gandapur's garden shed, Mr. Jackson would visit a place frequented by prostitutes where he would pick one up, get him high on crystal meth, bind them, take them to Mr. Gandapur's shed where they were sexually assaulted and then murdered. What caused you to think of Mr. Jackson when you became involved in the hunt for the Massapequa Mangler? When I found out a lock of Wendy Crane's hair was missing.
Why was that significant? Patty had the same M.O. with the women he raped. Objection! I am not a pervert! Mr. Jackson is a convicted rapist. The locks of hair he took from those women were trophies, souvenirs, if you will. Overruled. Most of the Mangler's victims were found in shallow graves around Nassau County, but Wendy Crane was found in Harlem, in plain sight. Can you explain? Patty didn't follow the plan. You see, Wendy had defensive wounds on her hands and on her arms. Something went wrong in the van. Patty panicked and he strangled her, then got spooked and tried to dump the body right there. But not so spooked he couldn't stop and take a lock of her hair. Correct. He had a knife, and I believe those trophies to be extremely important to him. Objection! Innocent until proven guilty! Overruled. Innocent until proven guilty is a civil right, Mr. Jackson, not a basis for objection. We appreciate your time, Detective Logan.